After the elections, we have an absolutely divided parliament here with 180 seats for the left, 163 for Macron's bunch and 143 for the far right. That's 50 more than they had last time. It's going to introduce a very long political crisis. It is against the constitution to have new elections within 12 months. So how do we get there? We had thought just two weeks before that we were likely to have a far-right government, that National Rally is a far-right party with a fascist core. What actually happened is that once Macron called the general election and said, you only have three weeks to campaign, you see, he had a plan. And his plan was the left won't manage to unite and so I'll be able to make everybody vote for me as the only alternative to the far-right. And so the good news is that the left really managed to foil that plan in a big way. Uh, the four left parties, uh, France in Revolt, La France Insoumise, which I'm an activist of, uh, the Communist Party, the Socialist Party, and the Greens, formed an electoral alliance called the New Popular Front, and they are now the biggest single group in Parliament. Now, normally the biggest single group in Parliament gets to choose the Prime Minister, but Macron is trying to get out of that. He's hoping that they can cobble together an alliance going from the Conservatives through to the uh, soft Labourites, the Socialist Party, and have some sort of national unity government, which in my opinion would be disastrous because it would disappoint people very much and lead later to a far-right government. So, how did the far right get so strong? First of all, the National Rally under Marine Le Pen worked very hard and very successfully to uh, detoxify its image. She threw her father out of the party because he couldn't stop making jokes about how much fun it would be to kill Jews again. Every time there was any sign of fascist rhetoric, she threw them out. She was also helped tremendously by the media, treating them very, very respectably, really becoming a normal part of everyday life. And also President Macron very much encouraged the far right by taking over their issues. So although Macron did not come from a section of the right which was in the habit of making Islamophobia a priority, it became a priority over the last few years. He's been passing laws to make things much harder for Muslim organisations of all sorts. And these are laws which don't really have a practical purpose. Their only objective is to tell the entire French population Muslims are a problem, you know. The left has been pretty much Islamophobic as well. I was at a demonstration 15 years ago where women wearing the hijab were insulted and yelled at by feminists shouting, your mother should have aborted you. That's how bad it was. Now, this has got much better over the last 10 years, but it's still not uncommon. There's another reason, and that is we have had an extremely combative working class in France over the last 30 years. Every three or four years, there's two million in the streets and mass strikes and so on. And so the importance of a racist far-right force to divide the workers it has become very, very central to the establishment. This included a section of big business owners, but in general, the attitude of business owners, of capitalists, if you like, in France, has been that they were happy to have the national rally as a strong force, putting politics to the right, supporting a very repressive police force. Uh, a couple of years ago in the Yellow Vest movement, I've forgotten how many people had their hands blown off with grenades and lost eyes. The reason there is not a far-right prime minister today is that the left did a number of things absolutely correctly. First of all, uniting the four left parties, absolutely essential, and the only way with the French two-round electoral system, the only way mathematically to stop the fascists. If you have several left candidates in each constituency, you raise the chances of having zero left candidates for the second round. Secondly, the unity encouraged hundreds of thousands of people to get involved in the election campaign. This has been the most dynamic campaign I have seen in 40 years in France. People I've known for years and years who I've never known give out a leaflet. They say, oh, I'm just off to the railway station to leaflet it. Uh, my organisation, France in Revolt, the France Saint-Soumise, uh, I think we got 70,000 new members in two weeks. The other thing which really helped very much, because one of the things you need to do to, to marginalise the far right, is to have a proper radical programme to answer to the real problems that people have. And the new popular front in these elections managed to put together a programme, they had four days to do it in, very, very good radical programme which made people enthusiastic. It's 150 reforms, so I'll just give you some of them. Freeze prices on basic foodstuffs. Raise the minimum wage by 14%. Raise all public sector wages by 10% and housing benefits similarly. Guarantee minimum prices for farmers to limit the profiteering of supermarket chains. End rough sleeping. Free school meals for all children. Reintroduce the wealth tax, which uh, Macron has abolished. Index wages on inflation. In schools, reduce class sizes. In health, 
stop private clinics from creaming off the most profitable business, hiring far more nurses and doctors, a massive increase in the number of student grants, and on the international level, stop arming Israel and recognise the state of Palestine. And on the home policy level, disband the most violent of the police units. There are things missing in the programme. It was a compromise. There were four organisations. So it doesn't mention stopping nuclear power. But that was a source of enthusiasm which allowed a tremendously dynamic campaign which pushed the fascists back. So although the fascists have 50 more seats than they had last year, this month... They're pretty demoralised. However, there's still a long way to go because we have 143 MPs and really what would be essential is if the couple of hundred thousand people who got involved in the election campaign remain mobilised and active to push the fascists back further. Now, what's going to happen now? Well, there are three possibilities. Either Macron manages to get this new alliance together, which will not help working people and might prepare a far-right government in the future. Second possibility, a minority left government. We don't have a minority by a long way. This, nevertheless, will have a series of advantages. First of all, there's a whole load of things which can be done, even without passing laws. For example, disbanding violent police units. You don't need a new law for that. The second advantage is the fact that the programme has generated so much enthusiasm. And one might hope that a minority left government would be supported by mass mobilisations. The programme for the new Popular Front is very much a set of demands which come from the social movements from the last few years. So reversing Macron's attacks on retirement, reversing the attacks on unemployment benefit, the minimum prices for farming, uh, that was a demand of the big farmers movement about eight months ago. Health coverage, in particular in rural areas, this was one of the big demands of the yellow vests. The trade unions are continuing to say we will support a left government as long as they go in the right direction and we won't hesitate to oppose them if they don't. And finally, I should say, on the side of racism, the New Popular Front programme is the first uh, programme of the mainstream left in France to include the fight against Islamophobia. And in particular, Jean-Luc Mélenchon, the leader of the France Insoumise, has decided that Islamophobia has to be central. Uh, and so in his recent uh, public meetings, he's been putting it forward. To everybody's surprise, this was always something that, you know, that the leaders of left organisations avoided talking about because their memberships were divided on it. So that's the situation. There's both a lot of things to worry about, but also a lot of hope in the uh, radical uh, left programme and the mobilisation of tens of thousands of new people. So we're seeing the traditional left and the traditional right getting weaker because they were in government and they just continued the austerity. So people are becoming more and more to choose between the radical left and the far right. Now, the far right are far more powerful in parliament than on the streets. Although they got 13 million votes in some elections, they can't get 10,000 people on a demonstration. They're very, very weak on the ground. And we need to make sure they stay weak on the ground 